Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. Hi, everybody. It's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bowe here after the Mavs' first uh, preseason win with uh, another episode of Mavs After Dark. They just defeated the Oklahoma City Thunder at home 107-70. to uh, The Mavs started a lot of guys who are going to be seeing rotation minutes, whereas the Thunder sat Chris Paul, and so they, they looked a little bit disjointed from the get-go. Josh, I didn't get to see all of the game. So why don't you tell me, you know, kind of your 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 baseline recap and then give me, you know, what what was your 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 good takeaway from the game? Uh, my baseline takeaway kind of recap of this game, I think, was you know, the Mavericks won by 37. They outscored the Thunder by 10 in the first quarter, nine in the second. And there was never a point where the game looked particularly great. You know, it definitely had that preseason feel wasn't super crisp there was some sloppiness you know it never felt like the Mavericks were in first gear throughout that first half you know firing firing on all cylinders but you know they had a lot of turnovers early but despite that they were just so much demonstrably better than the Thunder tonight and I think a lot of that can be attributed to hey the Mavericks have two stars they have Luka Doncic they have Kristaps Porzingis they have two of the better players in the league Um, they have two all-star caliber players and in the NBA, sometimes that's like all you need to win games, especially against a team like the Thunder tonight who are sitting Paul and Steven Adams. So they're down two starters and they're already, you know, a little bit of a thin team this year. So that's like, you know, when if you want the Mavericks to be a good team this year and you expect them to be a playoff team, these are the kind of results that they have to have. You know, they're playing against a team that's not playing all their best players and the team that even at full strength isn't probably going to be that great and they thumped them and they did it without you know playing a perfect game and I think that's something that you know a lot of optimists around the Mavs I think that's I think this is kind of what they're what they're thinking you know the Mavs kind of have a baseline of good play just because Przingis and and Doncic are just so good Um, so despite the fact that they they didn't shoot well from three again. They shot under 45% from the field. They had 23 turnovers. Doncic had six. They still never seemed like they were out of control of the game or like the game was ever going to get away from them. They got up big early and they stayed up stayed up big. And yeah, it's preseason, but it, it's good to see, especially after that Bucks game. Um, so my good, I think the, the my big takeaway is the impact that Porzingis can have on a game without him hitting shots. Uh, I think rebounding was one of his biggest uh, concerns outside of like injuries Um, coming into this season, you know, in New York, he wasn't really a great rebounder, uh, especially for a guy his size. He had 13 rebounds tonight and he's averaging a double double in the preseason. And yeah, it's preseason. And yeah, the Thunder weren't playing Steven Adams, but it's still really nice to see, especially for a Mavericks team that's going to be starred with rebounding. So, so Przingis had 13 rebounds. He had a block. I thought he was good defensively. I thought he protected the rim very well. And the Mavericks just seemed like a – they just seemed like a the much better team when he was on the floor. Of course, he was on the floor with Luka a lot, so that helps too. But uh, it was just nice to see Przingis contribute and, and play winning basketball, even though he shot 7 of 21 from the floor. Like – uh, it's just, you know, the Mavericks haven't had guys that can can do that. They haven't had guys that if they're not hitting shots, they can't do much to to help the team win games. You know, they've been so bad the last three years. They've been a lottery bound team. And this is what it looks like when you get stars. Sometimes you get wins you don't always necessarily deserve. You know, I think the Mavericks played hard. They deserved the win, but, you know, they weren't playing their best. And yeah, that was fun to see tonight. Yeah, I, I think mine would have to be uh Lucas free throws we kind of all had a collective panic attack uh 
when he went five for 10 in the first preseason game that he played in. But since he's been basically lights out from the line, he was nine of 11 tonight. And I believe he was nine of 10 um, the other night against the Bucks. Let me pull that up here just to make sure I'm not talking out of my rear. And he was, he was 10 of 11. So he's essentially really looking sharp from the line. And that was, the free throws and the way his shot looks early in the season are are really exciting to me because his he he seems to have developed a, a lot more core strength. There's a lot more balance when he's when he's shooting, and and you know overall he looks outstanding. He's so much better than all of the other Mavericks players. It's kind of hard to contextualize. <laughs> uh, it it really you know it, it's not that the other players are bad rather he's just outstanding so that's that's been pretty that's been pretty exciting so if you were to say you know what was what was you know something something you know bad either from the the thunder or from the mavericks what was what was your takeaway there uh i would say the shooting probably for the mavs they still haven't really <laughs> had a great three point shooting night and oh my is- god 5 of 34 no no wait that's no 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 thunder. no <laughs> yep. Well, the Mavs, is, the Mavs are better, but they're not, you know, they're more like normal bad, not mm-hmm. eye gouging bad, you know, 13 out of 40. Um, you know, once again, you know, the starters outside of Przingis and Doncic, you know, they actually did something compared to the last couple of preseason games. Uh, Wright had one of his better games. Courtney Lee, he did some things, is still alive. Uh, Klebo had a really good game, but None of those guys really hit hit threes well, and no one off the bench hit threes well either, except for Tim Hardaway Jr., surprisingly enough. Um, but, yeah, 13 out of 40, they just desperately need someone to pop this year. You know, they really need someone to, like, set a career high from three. You know, outside of Seth Curry, outside of Luka, outside of KP, they really need someone to step up and have a career year from deep because if, if not, they just they just don't have enough shooting, and, and that's a problem when you have well, probably – do you oh, think go they're taking good shots or do we think that they're these are like sometimes it's a matter of of okay players getting great looks versus players who shouldn't be shooting threes taking bad looks i feel like a lot of the threes that they're getting within the flow of the offense are really good looks and you know every now and again you're going to get some guys to pop but through four preseason games, there there just hasn't been anyone who's you know Hardaway was three for three tonight. Hard, I guess I guess Tim Hardaway Jr. is kind of the one guy who's had some some you know touch from the outside in these early games. So I I somehow feel like this has been really good process with bad results. Is that fair? I think that's fair, and you know part of that you know I'm the thing that I'm really concerned with going into the season I mean it's still preseason so I don't know if concern is the right word but yeah like you said the Mavericks get good shots and they have good process but at a certain point you know these guys like Kleba like Wright Finney Smith Jackson even if they have good years from three or they shoot like 35 36 percent from three are they gonna make enough threes to alter their reputation or to change the impact on a game that defenses are going to shift how they guard them. Because I feel like even if Jackson hits 35%, if Finney Smith hits 36, if Kleba hits 36, you know, something around there, I feel like teams are still going to guard those guys. Like they're not good shooters and that can still clog up your offense. Even if you're hitting, you know, league average or a little bit above league average from three, Um, you know, so I, I, that's my concern is even if these guys do pop, you know, is it going to matter enough? Our defense is going to warp enough. Is it going to be enough made threes for it to matter that they're being open, left open so much and Doncic and Przingis get doubled as much as they do. Um, so that'll be something I'll be, tr- you know, wanting to keep an eye on and, mm-hmm. and so forth through the preseason. It hasn't been great, but you know, Hey, like you said, they're getting, they're getting good shots. If the defense wants them to take them, you know, that's kind of what they have to, this is what they have to live with. Cause this is the team they built. You know, there's not really an alternative. This is the way they kind of have to play. You know, maybe they lean on Przingis with some more post-ups, but um, this is, this is the team they have. This is how they're going to play. This is the shots they're going to get. And they just got to hope some of these guys have some really good years and, and make them count. Yeah. Yeah. I would say my bad thing, and this is, again, it's nitpicking, it's preseason, but it's something I've just decided to focus on. You know, last year, my bugaboo for like the first 40 games of the year was how atrocious Dwight Powell was from three, uh, just because it was it was hilarious. He was he was awful. 
And then he turned it around in the second half of the season and still managed to only shoot 30% from three. So the thing that I'm really going to focus on simply because I think he's very important to the Mavericks success is Justin Jackson's rebounding. He has played 84 minutes in preseason. He has grabbed six rebounds. He is six foot nine, 225 pounds. He has got to be around the ball more that it's like, it's hard to play that much and only get six rebounds. I, I don't, you know, he, some of this stuff is getting masked from the fact that like he is putting the ball through the hoop. You know, he was plus 22 tonight with 12 points all, you know, it's his, he's actually played pretty good offensive basketball. I think uh, well enough to make a case for starting in the regular season. I, I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but if he really wants to lock down the spot, he's going to have to give them something in the form of rebounds, like doing something else because hitting open shots is helpful. But if the Mavericks are going to take any sort of step, he needs to be the guy that, you know, even if he's just grabbing, you know, four rebounds in, in 25 minutes or three rebounds, he can't have zero rebounds, which he's actually had once um, in, in 23 minutes, actually like, I, I again I'm nitpicking but it, it just kind of drives me crazy because you know we read all the preseason stuff he's put on 20 pounds he looks great yeah he, he's just kind of a guy that that I think expectations have to be managed particularly because he has a career long going back to high school of being a guy that looks phenomenal but doesn't produce I know I'm probably gonna get killed for that for people who really love him but that that's just where I'm at um is it, you know, sorry, you were about to say something. Go ahead. No, I was going to agree with you. You know, I mean, I know it's fun to make fun of the Kings for you know their decades plus long streak of ineptitude, but they've been on a run with talent evaluation lately, and for them to just kind of toss in Justin Jackson for the Harrison Barnes trade, you know, maybe that's a you know that that kind of made the the alarm bells go off because you know we have a lot of Kings friends and and, and blogger friends. Uh, they're right, right about the Kings, and they were, <laughs> there were no tears shed when, when the, when the Kings traded Jackson. So, you know, he has something to prove. He has not put together a full season from start to finish that you could consider. Hey, he's a starter level, you know, NBA player. So, you know, you know, I, I have hope. You know, there's we all hope that he's going to play well, but you know, he definitely has to prove it still. So, I, I wouldn't say you're, you're going too overboard there. Yeah. Well, is there anything particularly ugly for either squad that you want to highlight before we get on out of here? Well, you kind of mentioned it. The Thunder shot uh, five of 34 from three. <laughs> uh, man, like I kind of like the Thunder at full strength when they have Paul and uh, Adams because I think the Chris Paul, uh, Danilo Gallinari pick and roll combination is going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, their, their bench and their depth outside of maybe their top four guys you know, is really sus- suspect, and and that was pretty rough to watch. It kind of felt like the Mavs, uh, the first game the Mavs played uh, in the preseason. But another thing, you know, I want to throw in real quick is ugly for me is injuries. Um, Brunson tweaking his hamstring, not playing, not supposed to be serious, but hey, it's never hamstring is right. never good, no matter how how serious it is. Then Seth Curry had to leave the game with a knee contusion. Uh, I don't really know how serious that is. I don't think it's that serious i think it's kind of the preseason precautionary thing but right for a mavs team that is already at full strength you know they kind of have to have everything go right for them if they come out on the season opener and they're missing pal and they're missing curry and maybe missing brunson or if they're missing more than one or two of their top seven guys uh that's a problem because this team already kind of has some issue with their top end you know the the three through five guys, you know, already. So uh, something to keep in mind, you know, I hope Curry's okay. I think, you know, he probably is. Um, But yeah, you know, it's just not, not great to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really think, you know, there, there's uh, almost nothing ugly from the Mavericks tonight. I I mean, this box store is pretty nice. You know, know, Bray had uh, eight assists in 17 minutes, which is just the sort of stuff he did last year. And that's, that's, you know, something I think we're gonna have to keep an eye on. I I think, you know, the only close to to ugly thing that I can think of was that uh, uh, Porzingis attempted a dunk that Nerlens Noel just had an unbelievably beautiful block on like right at the rim. That was, that was pretty ugly, but you know, the, the, the bright side of that is seeing, seeing, you know, uh, Porzingis attack and that willingness to attack, you know, sometimes it's not going to end well. So, so it was ugly to watch, but you know, the end result, I, I'm, I, you know, 
I want to see him work through this rust. This is what preseason is for. I'm glad that the Mavericks are continuing to let him work through it. Uh, he's too skilled a guy to 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 not figure this out eventually. Um, the looks are there. I keep joking that it's that his outside shot is uh, is is Dwight Powell wearing a Chris Tapps Porzingis suit, but. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe we'll figure out something, you know, that, 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 that's the, yeah, I, I think that it'll figure it out. He's just got too long a track record, but uh, okay. So we have one more game. If I'm looking at the schedule correctly, it's going to be versus the Clippers at 10 30 on Thursday. Yeah. 10 30 on Thursday, East coast time. So nine 30 central uh, it's going to be on NBA TV. They're playing in Vancouver of all places, which is kind of, you know, interesting, taking it back to the old Vancouver Grizzlies site. Um, I, I think the, the, the league, you know, I, I have no idea if they would ever go back there, but that's an interesting spot for a preseason game. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this after the fifth game, because I don't know if anyone's actually going to play and there's anything to take away from it. Uh, I do know that I think Josh and I, and, and really our, the rest of our staff has enjoyed doing these. So I think we're going to try to keep these up with the regular season. We'll try to keep them as brief as possible. So, uh, thanks for, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, calling up tonight, Josh. And, uh, do you have any parting words before we get out of here? No, it's hey, good to get a win. I know it's preseason, but, uh, it was just fun to see the Mavericks get back on the board, get back on the board with a win and get the locker room feeling a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Regular season time. I'm ready for it. Me too. All right, guys. We'll, uh, this has been uh, jo- uh, Josh Bowe and Kirk Henderson with Maz Moneyball After Dark, and we will see you out there.